gets cold, but we have a relatively short break. Um, just a reminder all around that software speeches are going right now. Like, I'm so excited for it, and I just want to make sure that folks are putting your phone down, putting your phone away, just not being on your phone, trying to keep talking during a speech to a minimum, and overall just respecting the person at the microphone, because it's scary to do that. So just give kudos to everyone. Um, we'll start it off with Monty and Alvin on an AMC note. The AMC is next Wednesday at 8, 8.30, 8.30 in Miss Keith's room. I'm not sure if you can still sign up, but talk to your math teacher if you're interested. It's super, super duper fun, definitely. It is. Yeah. Um, so just bring a pen, pencil, and an eraser scratcher will be provided. Yeah. Math club? Oh, yeah. And uh, math club does meet on Monday during lunch period, so if you do want some like, extra preparation, you can come then. Do it. Yeah! Yeah! Um, also on sophomore speech etiquette, it's important that we clap really loud um, and embarrass people at least a little bit. Uh, Mr. Peters has winter sports announcement. Thank you. So I'd like to give a shout out to five individuals in the last few weeks from fall sports uh, in cross country running, Zola Heifmaster and um, Samantha Ortiz Naranjo. Both were all league for um, cross country. Zola was running, Zola was running this year. And then three members of our volleyball team were also recognized. Uh, Carla Cardenas was first team all league for our division. Quincy yeah. Key was second team, and Lily Berry Smith was a sportsmanship award winner for our team. So please give him a yeah. big round of applause. Thank you so much. And it's not too late to go out for winter sports. If you're still on the fence, please consider it. Thank you. Give a very warm welcome to Dean for his yeah. sophomore speech. Okay. In my hands, I hold a box that emits light and makes sounds that tells the time in mysterious alien ways. Just what the heck is this thing? People who were born 40, 50, 60, or 90 years ago have had a completely different experience growing up than I have. In the modern day and age, yesterday's supercomputer is today's everyday object, and people carry it around with them in their pockets without a second glance. Kids use it to scroll through TikTok in between classes and talk with anyone anywhere all of the time in seconds. Adults use it as the last tool they'll ever need the entire human knowledge library at their disposal, the internet. Access to the internet comes with access to hundreds of different peoples with different opinions. Being exposed to hundreds of different peoples with different opinions as you grow up is gonna to lead to some strange things, and it leads to some changes in the way I see things and the very way that I am. The first time I had the opportunity to experience the internet was when I turned 10 years old via a tablet. Before this, I had electricity and television, but a mobile device was a completely different story because of that access to the internet. Suddenly, I was able to talk with anyone, anywhere, whenever I wanted, but I didn't start that until I was 14. In other words, the greatest communication tool was in my hands, a tool that my parents never had. But the internet isn't all good. It can also bring bad. What was the ultimate bring together can also be the ultimate tear apart. If you allow yourself to get caught up in a screen or with people that I like to be around and games that I like to be around, let me start over. Okay, you got it. If you let yourself get caught up in the screen, if I let myself get caught up in the screen with people or games I like to be around, bad things happen.
happen. I check my phone every second, every minute, just to see if one of my friends sent me something new to laugh at or something maybe to cry at. It doesn't sound like this sort of thing should be a problem. If I manage my time online and don't let the internet consume me, it isn't a problem. But if I don't do that, things get out of hand very quickly. By ten spending too much time in front of a screen, one starts to lose touch with, real with the reality around them and the people around them. I was totally disconnected with the reality around me. I was choosing life on the screen over life in real life. Wait. schoolwork because I would rather do things with those friends on the screen. There's a word for that, and it's isolation. Unfortunately for me, reality is the only thing that's real. Real life has to come first, and I didn't put it first. That's the big problem. But it is totally possible to balance these two worlds to outstanding results, just difficult to. It's difficult because it's so easy to abandon that real half over the other. But it is possible, and it's something that I now, now do. With the right ratio of real life to online life, lots of good things can come. For example, by surrounding myself with smart people, I became a smart person. I was no longer limited by time or geography. I could talk with anyone whenever I wanted to, so I became a social person. I was also listening to people's opinions all of the time, so I became a listener. And because I watched the world go around, I became a leader. I was able to recognize what the internet meant for me and the people around me. Praise be the internet for all of its knowledge and for turning me into me. Thank you.